1769, fearing encroachment by the expanding Russian and British empires to the north, the Spanish government in Mexico decided to establish a presence in Alta, or Upper California. Two previously identified sites were designated for settlement, San Diego and Monterey. This expedition was led by Gaspar de Portola. They get to the coast, they're right in Monterey Bay, but they don't recognize it. And so they decide to go farther and farther north. And the expedition by this time was in such lousy shape. <clears throat> They'd been on the road for uh, weeks and weeks and weeks. They were eating moldy flour. They uh, didn't know anything about the plants. They didn't know what was edible. They didn't know what wasn't edible. They were suffering from scurvy. Uh, and they were in such rough shape that every day the expedition began with the priest saying the viaticum, saying the prayer over people that they expected to die that day. Uh, and these people would be dragged along on litters uh, as the expedition made its way. By this time, Portola uh, is beginning to think that they maybe have gone too far. And so he sends a soldier a sergeant to Jose Francisco Ortega up to the mountains to kind of see what he can see. And Ortega gets up there to a place which is now called Sweeney Ridge and he looks out to the ocean and then Ortega turns around and looks and sees the largest inland body of water that he had ever seen before. For the first time, newcomers to the American continents had discovered the largest estuary on the western coast of the Americas, entirely by mistake. At first, they were irritated by it. There is this bay in the way. They're really upset that they haven't found Monterey. They don't begin to understand the significance of the bay that they have discovered for a few more years. Six years would pass before a ship was sent to investigate the great estuary, which, given its stature, Franciscan friars would redesignate San Francisco Bay. On August 5th, 1775, the San Carlos, under the command of Juan Manuel de Ayala, would be the first ship from the outside world to attempt to enter the bay's treacherous entrance. At the entrance way to this harbor, the current was so strong that I could make no more than half a knot's headway. When I was a league inside the mouth and a quarter mile from the shore, the wind all at once fell still. Calma. At morning's light, the crew found its anchorage lay to the north of the entrance in quiet waters near a small grove of willows, a sausalito. Seeking a safer anchorage, they eventually chose the sheltered side of a nearby wooded island they named Our Lady of the Angels, Angel Island. From here, over the next month, the ship anchored while sailing master Jose de Canizares and a small crew explored and surveyed the bay. The world they encountered was one of breathtaking abundance. They would talk about the skies being darkened by flights of ducks and geese. They would talk about salmon or whatever the fish was in the local river spawning, coming up so thickly that you had the impression you could walk across the river. You see these same, these same expressions used again and again, and they were used here. It really seems to have been a, uh, a wildlife paradise, which is perhaps just a way of saying a piece of the original world. 